Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to help share tips and advice within their industry. And this week we're taking it on the road. And today I have Andy. And Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. It's yeah. nice to be here. Sure. Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I uh, have a company called Graphic Illusions. I've uh, been in business for uh, over 20 years. We do full service signs and graphics work to uh, the masses. Okay. Very good. So let's uh, get right into it. And why don't you talk a little bit about, um, you know, I see a lot of uh, cars, uh, I guess vehicle wraps. Mm -hmm. What is the uh, uh, benefit of a vehicle wrap for one? And then what should someone look for when they're actually getting a, a vehicle wrap? Well, the, the first thing is, if you're in business, you should have your car having some kind of markings on it, whether it's a partial wrap or a full wrap. And by partial, I mean you're utilizing your logo and your contact information for somebody to get a hold of you for your service. Um, things that you need to look for is, is cost is not the only issue because there's different materials that can be used for it. Uh, if you go out there and somebody says it's $200 to do this on your car and somebody else says it's six, most likely the difference is the substrate they're using and it makes a really big difference. If you use the wrong stuff, in three to six months, you're going to be redoing it. If you use the right stuff, you can go six to nine years and not, never have to do anything to it. Okay. So the stuff that you can probably, I've seen, <laughs> uh, peeling off on cars, that's probably the wrong stuff. Most of the time, if it's peeling quickly and it's got a full color picture type thing, uh, it's an inferior product. Uh, it's a short term, three to six month type of thing. And when you see the pretty picture printed, you don't know what it's on. So quality of the product, uh, some brand names to keep in mind are Arline and 3M, but even in those, there are different grades. So when you're talking to a client, or when I'm talking to a client about what they want, I'm letting them know we're using the best product we can because you know, we want the repeat business for new stuff, not fixing something that was done with the wrong material. Right, okay. So there are um, some unique products that you can create signs with. Um, I know in particular, I've seen you know, recently a lot of LED lights and then you also yep. see neon. So what's the difference between the two? Uh, the biggest difference is LED is taking over. It's done with frequency as opposed to gas. Uh, neon uh, is high voltage. It's cost you a lot more in energy in order to do that sign nowadays than to do the LED. For instance, it, it might take 25 amps to run a neon sign, and it's going to take 2 amps to run an LED sign. You have a little bit more initial cost for the LED, but those prices have come down since the past five or six years. Uh, it, it's, they've improved the technology. More companies are doing it. They're expanding the color line, so it makes it a lot easier and uh, cheaper in the long run. So the biggest thing is maintenance on that neon over time versus an LED. So you could go from a $300 power supply to a $100 power supply situation. Now is there okay. a uh, difference in uh, durability? I mean, a neon bulb is pretty fragile, correct? Um, yeah, it is. Uh, gravity and, and glass don't mix together. So uh, a LED sign, for instance, they say will last about 100,000 hours. So, you know, if uh, the, the worst thing that you're going to happen would be a power surge or something to knock out the power supply, but that's not going to knock out the LED modules. So uh, you're probably going to get 10 years worth of continuous life out of that LED sign versus the neon that, you know, every three or four years you're going to have to do some kind of maintenance to. So as far as cost, is it much, is it more expensive for the LED? Um, it, over the past probably year and a half or so, I think LED has gotten to be a little cheaper than neon. Um, neon's kind of a dying art around here. There's only a few vendors left because uh, once LED came around, I mean, you can put that into your channel letters or your other sign in a matter of minutes. You don't have to worry about things breaking. You don't have to worry about bends and how they're going to fit nice and tight. So it's a pretty versatile product versus that neon. Um, there's a lot of old signs that, you know, need to be repaired for neon and people are finding out that that sign they got for free is going to cost them a thousand dollars to fix and uh, it's that's not such a good idea anymore right okay so say someone wants to get started with the sign um, you know how does one what kind what, what type of artwork do they have to provide for you can they just give them a business card or what, well what do you mean? That, that's not ideal to just have a business card um, we certainly can do that and and redraw it um, any good artist should be able to redraw what you bring them. The best thing would be a vector file 
which is essentially line art in a computer that machines can follow. Um, the best description I usually give people is a magazine picture is a raster image. There's no lines. But if you look at a coloring book and there's those dark lines, that would be the equivalent to vector in a computer. So vector is the best because it's fully scalable. You can make it as big as the building, uh, and it's going to look nice and clean. If you ever look at your pictures you take with your iPhone or something else, and you see the little pixels and jagged edges, that's a raster image. And uh, a low-res file is not good when you have to reproduce in a larger situation. You have to try to figure out how you're going to modify it or, or make it you know, get a photographer to get a better picture if it's a real subject. Okay. Well, thank you for the information today. And uh, okay. if those of you out there watching this would like more information on Andy and uh, inquire about uh, having making some signs, please check out the website at the end of this video. And for those of you who would like to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, please do so by clicking the link below. And if you have any comments about this video or want to talk to Andy, um, feel free to fill that in. We'd love to continue this conversation online. So that's it for this week. Take care. We'll see you next time.